Welcome to this service of worship from wherever you are. It is the third Sunday of Easter. We honor the traditional territory of the Simk on which this church in Vailmont stands. I am the Reverend Dee McEachern, retired minister and standing in for Kim McNaughton, our regular minister of the Robson Valley Shared Ministry, Vailmont and McBride Anglican United Churches. Let us pray. Redeeming God, with you there is always more life, more hope, more joy. When doubt assails us and we fail to recognize you at work in our lives, be with us this day. When fear impairs our faith, our eyes, ears, our hearts do not know you. When anger and sorrow stop us from doing the risky work of love you call us to do, be with us this day and this week. Amen. Our first song today is 222 in Voices United, Come Let Us Sing by Jim Strafty. With the help from our musicians Annette Ryerson and Wayne Brown, and Shirley Taylor. We will sing verses, uh, all the verses. Good. Lectionary Gospel reading today is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still and were sad. Then one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and Leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. 
but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should, should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's sing 466 in Voices United. Eat this dread, eat this bread, and drink this cup by the Taze community, and we'll sing it through fully twice. You to our musicians. Let us pray. As we come before you, God, this day, may we hear anew your word for us. Amen. In the breaking of the bread, here I have a small loaf. Well, looks small or maybe it looks even bigger I don't know but anyways I don't know how it looks to you out there but I look at it and I feel it and I see how well it has risen I see its lovely rich color the crusty brown and as I break it open 
I smell its aroma. Not only did Cleopas and his friend see and smell the bread, but in the action of breaking the bread, we are told, they finally recognized Jesus. This man that had walked perhaps most of the seven miles or 15 kilometers with them, they had not recognized him until the breaking of the bread. How foolish they must have felt. Because we learn that no sooner had Jesus left them than the two men turned around and went back to Jerusalem in the dark to tell the others whom they had seen. No time to sleep. As you all know, we are living in an unprecedented time unprecedented time, where it is hard to believe unless we see or experience this coronavirus or COVID-19. No, we need to believe that this virus is not good for us. As a senior over 70, I am the mo in the most vulnerable group, so I don't want to see this virus or experience it. Our Prime Minister and our Provincial Health Authority, Dr. Henry, are telling us not to get too excited about getting back to having things the way they were before the pandemic. Keep our distance, wash our hands frequently, don't touch our faces, wear a mask while shopping, be safe. This Jesus guy is walking anonymously with Cleopas and his friend. He asked them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. What? Don't you know what is happening? How is it possible that someone doesn't know what is happening? So they tell him about Jesus being turned over to the authorities and his death on the cross. Are you sure you haven't heard about this? Kind of a bit of an irony, isn't it? So do some of you folk remember the 2003 fires in BC? The fires that shut down the valley, roads closed, no rail traffic, and worst of all, no power. I had just come to the Robson Valley, so it was very memorable for me. And it was a long weekend in August, and my family was arriving. At the same time, a friend of mine had already taken out an eight-day trail ride up the Moose River. And when he got back, he couldn't figure out why the power was off and his fridge and freezer had thawed, as the weather was hot. He was bewildered at what had happened until he learned about the fires south of us. So it can happen that someone can miss out on what is happening. So this stranger joins the walk, but we know it's Jesus. The two others fill him in on what had happened. And you know, there were women who went to the tomb and saw angels, and the angels told them that Jesus is risen. The stranger then says to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he begins telling them of the scriptures and interpreting the story from Moses and the prophets on. Cleopas and his friend are amazed at what they are hearing, but they still don't recognize him. As the three reach Emmaus, 
The stranger appears to be going on. And Cleopas and his friend urge the stranger to stay with them for the night. He accepts. Then at the meal, it is the stranger who breaks the bread and blesses it and shares it with the two. And in that moment, they recognize the stranger as Jesus, now the Christ. And immediately he disappears. What? Where has he gone? He was just here. All of the things that he told us. My goodness. I'm sure the two were in shock. Jesus had appeared to them, spent hours with them, told them his story, broke bread with them. And Luke tells us that the two men then turned around and went back to Jerusalem at that late hour to tell the others that they had seen him. Seeing is believing. Yet we are all called to trust this story so that we can, too, believe. Our country right now is reeling at the terrible tragedies last weekend in Nova Scotia. How does that happen in small rural communities? I want to say that our prayers go out to those families and to those communities where such death brings such sadness. We are also wondering about how the loss of life has happened in care facilities in Ontario and Quebec over this coronavirus. So we offer our prayers to those families as well. Let us take heart that we do not ever know how long we have on this earth. But let us be following the safe guidelines for ourselves and for our communities. The key to all of this is we just don't know when our lives will change. Just like those two men on the road to Emmaus. They thought they were talking to a stranger, but in the house, he became the host and broke the bread for the travelers. Only then did recognition sink in. The stranger was the Christ. As Jesus was the man, Christ is the spirit. Then he disappeared from their sight. When will we have the opportunity to recognize Christ in our midst? Be always ready to be surprised. And in the night, Cleopas and the friend returned to Jerusalem to tell the disciples, now the apostles, learners of the gospel, now become the tellers of the gospel. He is alive. We have seen him and broken bread with us. This is the good news. As we break bread this day, may there be an element of surprise and hope in your midst. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, bread of life, fill us with your love and hope in our surprise to see something new, something different. May we also be aware of what we are grateful for in this time of Easter. 
as spring offers us new life pushing through the ground and being pulled between Hosanna and crucify in this pandemic. We become so aware of how fragile life is and that all that we have to do to maintain it. May we remember those who are in need of our prayers. Hold them in your love as we continue to pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our creator God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will you join me for some bread? A reminder of the breaking of bread, Christ breaking bread for us. And in that moment of recognition, we are amazed. Amen. Our final song today is 182 in Voices United, Stay With Us Through the Night. Words by our past moderator of the United Church, Walter Farquharson, and music by Ron Klosmeyer, written in 1988 at the time of the war against Iraq. Many church people at that time were against that war, and it is the invitation from Cleopas and friend to have the stranger stay with them for the night. to Shirley and Annette and Wayne for our music today. Next Sunday, Kim McNaughton will be back. And if you need any, any conversation or anything or any help, please feel free to contact Kim McNaughton at Dunster. Thank you to Michael Peters and the board of VCTV for videotaping these church services for our communities in the Robson Valley and elsewhere as I hear. Let us go from this place. Within every kernel of doubt, there is a spark of life and hope. In those times when our faith falters, when we cannot recognize the presence of the holy among us, God takes our faith and transforms it patiently showing us the many ways Christ walks among us. Look around you 
as close as your own beating heart and in the eyes of your nearest neighbor, grace abounds at the heart of all life. You are all God's children, loved without condition. Go in that peace. Amen. Our service begins.